three best practices for Microsoft SharePoint. And yes, I know there are many, many more, but let's face it, it's a difficult product and you need a consultant to help you. So that is why I placed three items now. And how do I know that? Well, these are items I get to know every time. My name is Paul Kaisers and I've helped numbers of companies get the most out of Microsoft SharePoint. So you can trust, I know what I'm talking about. So if you need help, let me know. But first we get into the demo. So what we have here is a SharePoint site. And the first item is about lists. So when you create a list or a document library, let's put it that way, then you can do this by going to site contents. And this is the first best practice. You can create new and here you can create list or document library. I'm going to create a document library. Maybe I had to do a different, but let's see. So you can choose out of existing items and I'm going to create a blank document library. Let's call it test. I can set sensitivity labels. If you have this on, I would recommend to have this on. That's another best practice, but not for this one, this video. So I'm going to create it. And once it's created, actually what people do is they create a SharePoint site and then they move the whole file explorer directly to the document library, or they have like 25,000 items they want to push into this library. What happens is that after the 25,000 are added to it, you cannot change it anymore or you cannot view it. What is happening is because there were no indexes set initially. So when you know a library is going to have a lot of items directly into it, make sure you set up indexes. How do you do that? You can do that uh, via this gear wheel. And if you have this gear wheel, you can go to library settings. And here I can go to more library settings. And here you will see the items that are in there now. Now, in this case, I haven't used content types because it's, uh, it's just a new library. But at the bottom here, you have indexed columns. And what you want to do is create an index. So at the start, there are null indexes created. That means that after you put in directly like 20,000 items plus, you will not be able to view this library. So that's something you want to change directly. So you create an index. Here you can check which column you want to have and then you can click on title and click on create. Once it's created, now we can add the 25,000 and it will still be viewable. This is something that a lot of people forget when they start off a new uh, library or list, which they know already it's going to be a large list. In this case, I only set one column but it's preferable to have multiple columns indexed because it will speed up the process. Then a second one is in this case, we do not have any items in here, but let's make a few items. And the best practice for two is about item level security. And I'm just going to create a test folder and let's just make a Word document below here. Let's call it X. That's fine, blah, blah, blah. Let's wait a little bit. I can already go here, refresh it. It will show me document X. So what they want to do is uh, they have this folder and they have multiple folders and then they want to manage the permissions of the subfolders because that's how they set it up. For example, they have a, a account for a company name. Under that, they have a offer and under that, they have another thing and they want to set permissions on, for example, offer at the lowest step. But what I would suggest and what's a second best practice is not to break the permissions because that's what you are going to do if you are going to say, okay, here we go. And I say manage access and then I can say stop sharing or I can go even to the advanced settings 
And here I can say, say stop inheriting. What happens for this time? It works. But if you have over 5,000 items with all different permissions in one library, you will have uh, performance issues as well. I opened the top restrictions and limitations. I'm going to go there uh, as soon as possible. But I first wanted to show you this is not the way to do it. So Paul, how's the best way to do it then? Well, that's uh, very easy. What in this case? we talked about account uh, the offer and then the offers with special permissions so what i would do is first i would create a sharepoint site or teams with the account name then i would create the library offer and maybe you have aftercare i would create a new library and there on the library level i would set the permission levels so you don't have the item level security and i think that's a big big win especially for uh, support but also if you want to know which permission is set where it's very clear and it's also helpful now if you like this video so far don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel and share this video with everyone we go to the last one and that's a one that a lot of people don't know about but it's very uh, common that people hit this threshold. Which threshold am I talking about? The best practice about OneDrive and the 300,000 files that are synced to your PC. So what people tend to do is they uh, tend to sync the library. I see the option is already gone here. Yes, it's already gone here, but they used to go and sync the library, which is fine, of course. But if you have 300,000 items in the library, then this could cause an issue with syncing. And in this case, it's not about only this library, but it's about all the storage that you sync directly to your PC. So, for example, if I have my OneDrive, I have 125,000 items in my OneDrive. I know that because I checked it. But if you also have like a SharePoint site with 200,000, then you are already hitting this limit. So be aware of that. And in, the, in my case, 125,000 items is a very a lot. Uh, but I, what I would do is add the shortcut to OneDrive. What happens is you directly have your sync in OneDrive. And I made a video of that as well. But let's go to OneDrive for a minute. So here we have uh, the OneDrive. And you already see I've uh, created a SharePoint folder. But also here there's a, a shortcut to a finance, for example. And this is synced as well. But if you have like 25,000 items here and you don't do not longer need this shortcut you can say okay just remove the shortcut with the old technique where you have to sync each library to your pc and then you had to check how much items were synced uh, that could be an issue because then you had to uh, fully uh, stop syncing the library etc etc plus it was not available on each device you needed to do this on each device so this is something the add shortcut to OneDrive is really uh, helpful there. It's a different way of thinking, but it's a best practice. And the best practice is, of course, the 300,000 items. Don't go over that because it will cause your issues on your PC. Your OneDrive will be doing weird stuff and you think, okay, what's happening here? This is something that's really common and I just wanted to point this out. So now we've seen uh, the best practice three i wanted to show you the restrictions and this is about a onedrive and we first go to the top and here we see the restrictions and the limitations in onedrive for sharepoint so one of the limits is editing 50,000 items sharing limits another one is 250 gigs of file upload and there are more so here we go a bit down you see the characters maybe it's even a best practice for but invalid file or lock names you see them as well and let's see one because i wanted to show you the when sharing a folder total number of sub items contained within it and the subfolder is limited to 50,000. So that's something that you need to know as well. I think this is really important to know. Number of items synced. So 
this is also where we talked about. You can only copy up to 2,500 files one time. So it's not a good idea to use it for migration and for optimum performance, 300 files across your cloud storage. That means SharePoint, OneDrive, those two, you can only have the 300,000 items. So that's something that's really important here. So these are the most common ones that I have seen. If you want to work with me, let me know. If you want to know another video or want to see another video of SharePoint, you can click here and see you next time.